finally, it's, uh, it's my privilege to introduce our, our featured speaker, Tom Talkin. Scott asked me this morning if I would do the intros. Uh, and I said, sure. And he said, uh, do you know Tom Talkin? I said, uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I've met him. He gave me his bio. My gosh. What a great American. Um, let me read his bio. Tom Pawkin is, is, commissioner rep, is commissioner representing employers of the Texas Workforce Commission, where he has served since being appointed by Governor Rick Perry in March of 2008. Commissioner Pawkin served as the TWC chairman until last April. He brings decades of public service and experience to TWC, having held numerous leadership positions. In 2007, he served as chairman of the governor's task force on appraisal reform, and he served in the White House Counsel's Office under President Ronald Reagan, and was appointed by the president to serve as director of action, <coughs> where he founded the Vietnam Veterans Leadership Program. Action is known as the, um, as now known as AmeriCorps. Mr. Pawkin also was instrumental in the implementation of the First Lady Nancy Reagan's Just Say No to Drug campaign. Commissioner Pawkin is a United States Army veteran who received his uh, commission in the military intelligence and served in Vietnam as a province intelligence officer and as a senior analyst uh, for the Office of Strategic and Research Analysis. It's our privilege and honor to have Mr. Pawkin with us this morning. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I met Tom a little earlier. He was talking about ties. I sure am glad I had a red Christmas tie. <laughs> it's the only one I've got now. <laughs> I believe your previous career must have been as a magician somewhere. <laughs> It's uh, really good to be here. Scott, I, I am glad to, uh, that I was able to uh, get here before you left. I didn't know you were leaving, and you're going out of state. Uh, you can't stay too long. We need you back in Texas. Uh, you've done a terrific job. And I, I want to, first of all, applaud all of you. I mean, it's incredible what you've done. In fact, I've talked about it elsewhere. Elsewhere, and I'm In Texas, I'm going to mention it, of course, again today. But this partnership that you have put together with Scott and the city and the school district uh, and TSTC and Temple, uh, it, is, it, it, it is really something that I think uh, is going to have a long-lasting value and be great for them. For the young people who are going to have opportunities, I guess I was surprised. I've been in the private sector since leaving uh, the Reagan administration when the governor asked me to come back in chair of the Workforce Commission. There were a lot of surprises when I got back into government, how much more complicated everything was. Sort of a neglect almost a denigration of vocational education, or what we used to call vocational education, we now call it <coughs> technical education. But also what surprised me was all this turfmanship, even among the community colleges. Obviously TSTC is a, a statewide effort, and they've got to uh, find campuses in, in different areas across the state of Texas, but they offer uh, some unique uh, a training, skills training, that really, quite frankly, particularly in the urban areas, some of our uh, our community colleges, which are more oriented towards getting people to a four-year university, don't offer. And what I was surprised about is all this turpitude. We can't come into our area, and it's really I applaud uh, Dr. Ray and all of the people at Temple College and TSTC and Scott and others who have put together a collaborative partnership uh, uh, here in Hutto. And I think uh, I think you're going to you know. Uh, others are going to be coming to take a look at you. I understand already uh, there are already people not just from uh, Texas but elsewhere coming in to look at this unique uh, partnership. But this is a great example of community leadership and everybody working together. Uh, sometimes, particularly in this uh, uh, tense political environment, we sort of get you know at at odds with one another nationally. But it's uh, it's encouraging to see the kind of partnership that's uh, exhibited here. I, I want to talk, I'm leaving in February, uh, I guess as I said earlier, one of my biggest surprises coming back in was this idea everybody should go to a four-year university and, and the community colleges and places like TSTC, which really emphasize skilled training, 
and uh, you know they, that was sort of somehow a stepchild and vocational education. Uh, in fact, I, when I got back from Vietnam, I was appointed the National Advisory Council on Vocational Education, uh, and and served in that capacity for five years. And back then, there was a recognition vocational education. You know, a lot of students who were interested in that at the high school level could move in that direction. Other students who wanted to be college bound could move in that direction. But a recognition of the of the validity, if you will, of of multiple pathways. And then coming back in, I guess what surprised me among many things was that there's a sort of one-size-fits-all approach to education. And I remember uh, talking to uh, a group down in Freeport, Texas, when I first came in and talking about the need for more emphasis on career and technical education. And a couple of people uh, come up to me, a couple of superintendents and some business people, and said, now you're in Austin and you're saying that? Uh, I mean, it was like four years ago. It was. Uh, it was very unusual, I guess, uh, to, to talk about uh, what, to me, seemed like common sense. But let me today tell you a little bit about where we are in terms of the workplace and, and the problems we have. And we still remain the number one state in America to do business, but there's some issues out there. And everywhere I've gone in Texas for the past four years, employers have told me about the shortage of skilled workers in our state. For example, and, and this is a problem nationally, the annual survey of manpower group in 2011 found that the hardest jobs to fill in the United States were for the skilled trades. A recent survey by the consulting firm Deloitte, quote, found that 83% of manufacturers reported a moderate or severe shortage of skilled production workers for hire, unquote. And the results are similar here in Texas. Let me just cite a few examples. The average age of a welder is 55, a plumber 56, a stonemason or craftsman 56. I was just, excuse me, the stonemason and craftsman 69. I was just down in Baytown and there's an incredible explosion in terms of expansion in the petrochemical industry taking place here. And their biggest concern, quite frankly, is a grain workforce and where the skilled workers are going to come to replace uh, the people that are close to retirement. And what I would say is what happened to our pipeline of skilled workers? Somehow, I would suggest to you over the last two decades, certain political leads decided that everyone should be prepared to go to a four-year university. I call it the one-size-fits-all approach. And in an attempt to make every high school student college ready, our state has come to rely on the so-called <coughs> four-by-four curriculum and a very expensive high-stakes testing system. First, it was the TOS test, then the TOX test, and now we have the STAR test. And it seems to me so much of our educational system these days is driven by a teaching to the test mentality from the third grade to the high school level. And in many ways, test learning has replaced real learning. And then meanwhile, in this quest to push every student to go to a university, we have de-emphasized our career and technical education programs beginning at the high school level and continuing at the post-secondary school. <coughs> this marvelous book, Shop Class at Soulcraft, an inquiry into the value of work, Matthew Crawford, and I just mentioned a little of Matthew's background. I've had him at two of our TWC conferences. He worked his way all through school as an electrician, went on and got a PhD in philosophy at the University of Chicago, went to work for Washington Think Tank, didn't much care for it, is now running a motorcycle repair shop uh, in uh, Richmond, Virginia, in Lusk. And he really makes the case of the value of skills training and and self-sufficiency in working with one's hands. But Matthew Crawford points out in his book that, quote, high school shop class programs were widely dismantled in the 1990s as educators prepared students to become knowledge workers. Writing at the time of the Great Recession four years ago, here's what Crawford had to say. This seems to be a moment when the useful arts have an especially compelling economic rationale. Car Mechanics Trade Association reports that repair shops have seen their business jump significantly in the current recession. People aren't buying new cars or fixing the ones they have. The current downturn is likely to pass eventually, but there are also systemic changes in the economy arising from information technology that have the surprising effect of making the manual trades, plumbing, electrical work, car repair, more attractive as careers. Princeton, Princeton economist Alan Blender argues that the crucial distinction in the emerging labor market is not between those with more or less education, but between those whose services can be delivered over a wire and those who must do their work in person or on site. The latter will find their livelihoods more secure against outsourcing 
to distant countries. As Winder puts it, you can't hammer a nail over the internet, nor can the Indians fix your car, because they are an Indian. And to borrow a phrase from Will Rogers, if stupidity got us into this mess, then why can't it get us out? <laughs> I, would, I, I would suggest to you, the answer to the critical shortage of skilled workers is simple, but not easy. We got powerful interests arrayed to protect the existing system of education, financing, and performance measurements. The problem I would suggest is that the system is broken, and the average Texan gets it, even if many of the political elites don't. The time is right for major reform of our educational system so that we place greater emphasis on vocational and technical education and provide those opportunities at both the secondary and post-secondary school levels. Let's replace the one-size-fits-all talks and star tests that we use to evaluate all our students with two different tests. One that measures college readiness for those who plan to pursue that route, such as the ACT or SAT, and one that measures career readiness. We all learn differently. Some students don't enjoy or do well in an abstract student in a classroom setting. I have a son like that who, for whatever reason, bright kid, paid in school, but he would excel, he did, by working with their hands in a skilled trade. That's why a hands-on approach to skills training is so important in preparing a student to be job ready. Let's give our high school students the facts about the employment market. <coughs> Young people who've completed an industry certified skills training program in high school or in a post-secondary community college or career school or a TSTC have a better opportunity to get a good paying job than many graduates of four-year universities. A graduate of TSTC with a two-year associate's degree in the engineering-related technology field of instrumentation can go to work in the petrochemical industry at a starting salary of $68,000. A master plumber can make $75,000 in three years. I have to tell you the story. I was speaking at a meeting with the board of directors of the plumbers and HVAC organization in the state of Texas. A lady said she'd been out of school for a career day and trying to get young people interested in going into plumbing. She wasn't having much interest, not much uh, success. And finally, she thought to herself, I know what I need to do. And she went out, got a sign, and put it uh, up $75,000 in three years. And uh, all of a sudden, there was a lot more. Money. But literally, uh, a master plumber can make $75,000 in three years. I just was with. Uh, uh, the founder of the Craft Training Center down in Corpus Christi yesterday at a meeting in Austin where educators and business leaders got together about educational reform and the new educational policy here in the state of Texas. A certified welder coming out of the Craft Training Center can go to work at $1,700 a week. If we're going to move in this direction of rebuilding our pipeline of skilled workers with increased opportunities for vocational education, We've got to be creative in how we go about implementing these changes given our finite resources. Equipment is expensive, as you know, for certain technical training programs, and we have to be resourceful in providing these opportunities to our young people. That's why it's so exciting to see what you're doing here in Hutto. We need to avoid expensive duplication of services forever, wherever possible. For example, the Craft Training Center in Corpus Christi is a terrific example of a public-private partnership that provides skills training for high school students in the day and adults in the evening in a very cost-effective fashion. Students from 14 area school districts and a charter school come to a central location at the training center where they receive industry-certified instruction to become welders, electricians, pipe fitters, and another skilled trades. And Matula runs the Craft Training Center, and she points out that the students who get school skills training there also do better academically as they learn to appreciate the importance of basic math and literacy skills in mastering the craft they're learning. And she says, you know, these kids, and we get a lot of the kids who are in the back of the classroom, maybe poised to drop out, they come to us, they get involved and interested in welding, working with their hands, and all of a sudden the light bulb goes on and they say, oh, that's why I need to have math. That's why I need to have basic literacy skills. And our own statistics from the Texas Workforce Commission shows that those students who in high school get, a cover, get the opportunity for a coherent sequence of technical training courses have a better graduation rate and also do better academically. 
we uh, should do more to empower community colleges to partner with school districts across the state. San Angelo area high school students, for example, op operate a workforce training center with Howard College where high school students can under earn an industry certified credential in fields ranging from building and trades to allied health professions. Students not only get industry certified training, but they also get <coughs> dual credit. A similar program is operational in Mount Pleasant with the high school in Northeast Texas Community College. Here in Hutto, Texas, I think you've got a model that you're putting in place to be replicated elsewhere across the state of Texas. This is a major initiative that involves Temple College, Texas State Technical College, and the Hutto Economic Development Corporation and the other uh, arms of uh, leadership here in Hutto. Known as the East Williamson Higher Education Center, high school and college students will be able to take courses leading to an industry certified credential in a skilled trade or classes oriented towards preparing for a university degree. High school students from the area will be able to take courses and get dual credit here. This is a great example of what can be achieved through collaboration and the sharing of resources. <coughs> Rather than engaging in a turf war where each institution views the other as a threat, Temple College and TSTC have come together in a way that highlights and leverages each school's unique strengths. With Temple providing academic instruction and in the allied health fields and IT, and TSTC providing training for in-demand skilled jobs. Quite frankly, there are some community <coughs> colleges out there that have underutilized capacity that could be made available to provide technical training to local high school students. As a state, we need to do more to make it attractive for such partnerships to develop and flourish. A major priority, and I know what you're saying, Commissioner, about the legislature, but in the next legislative session on the education front, I think we've got an opportunity uh, to really fix a misguided education policy with a more common sense solution which recognizes that students have different talents and interests. I want to make it clear, I fully support holding schools accountable through a multiple pathway approach to a high school diploma. But the current system does not hold schools accountable for successfully educating and preparing students. Rather, it makes them beholden to performance on a single test or multiple tests, 15 tests under the new system. Success and accountability can be measured in a variety of ways. Now, some people have been critical of my constant emphasis on the importance of vocational education as a key component of a comprehensive high school educational curriculum a class that I want to go back to tracking students, particularly minorities, away from college and into career education. In fact, we have a tracking system under the existing uh, education policy. I call it a dropout track because we're losing a lot of kids who don't find education relevant. And the reality is we're not giving kids across the board the opportunity of appropriate choices. Expanding career and technical education at the high school level simply gives students choices to get basic training in a vocational field and be able to get a license or an industry certified credential by the time they graduate from high school. And let me tell you, it's not limited. And go on to community college or TSTC or a four-year university. Uh, we're seeing examples of people who get a certification as an electrician, go to work for a company, and then that company supports them as they move on to be an electrical engineer later. Proponents of a system to prepare everyone to go to university fail to acknowledge that we're losing too many kids who lose interest in education at an early age and who might have thrived had they been given more opportunities for career and technical <coughs> education in high school. A re renewed recognition of the value of vocational education for those students so interested and with that kind of talent can provide an opportunity pathway for many students who otherwise might fall through the cracks under a one-size-fits-all educational system. Much of the emphasis on testing, including the unveiling of the STAR program, is a well-intentioned effort to improve educational attainment in Texas. But we put most of the emphasis on standardized testing for the past two decades, and yet we still have a big problem with dropout rates and increased uh, scores on state exams often do not translate into improved college, interest, college entrance exam scores. The usual response from the testing bureaucracy is to roll out a new test 
make a few technical changes in the accountability system, and promise everyone that it'll be better this time. Sort of reminds me of uh, Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown every Thanksgiving time, and Charlie, I'm not going to pull it up as you run up to kick it this year, and of course she always has a new story, and Charlie falls for it, and guess what? She always pulls the ball away from Charlie. I would suggest to you that we've got a, uh, that's what they, they told us when TOS became TOX, and that's what they're saying now that the TOX, uh, tox uh, system is now becoming STAR. Frustration on the part of parents, employers, and educators with the current system has built up for years. Change is long overdue, and we need to have the courage to provoke, propose bold, meaningful solutions to these issues, rather than just tinkering around the edges. We need to allow for multiple pathways to a high school degree. One academic pathway would emphasize math and science. Another, the humanities and fine arts. A third would focus on career and technical education. All students in high school would get the basics, but there would be greater flexibility than under the one-size-fits-all existing system. To me, this is a common-sense approach to preparing young Texans to be college-ready or career-ready. It's time to end this teaching-to-the-test system that isn't working either for the kids interested in going on to college or for those more oriented towards learning a skilled trade. It's time to replace a system driven by test learning with one that focuses on real learning and preparation for success in life. Thank you. Superintendents, business leaders, parents yesterday, day before I met with legislators, one a Republican, one a Democrat. Uh, people across party lines, across ethnic lines are coming together, as I've never seen before, in a coalition to uh, bring about fundamental change in terms of offering multiple pathways and more uh, opportunities, uh, if you will, uh, to get away from this highly restrictive teaching to the test system. So legislation's being prepared. I know maybe it's a little more I'm cautiously optimistic that we have the kind of broad uh, range support that uh, can get significant legislation passed this session. I wouldn't have said that four years ago um, when I first started talking about this, but there, as I got around, I thought, well, I mean, am I out of tune? And I guess I was out of tune with Austin at the time. But the more I went around the state and listened to employers and educators, people on the ground teaching the kids, got a daughter who teaches in high school. She, you know, she's in a suburban district and she says, look, I, Dad, I get these kids from the third grade of the high school. I'm trying to teach them critical learning skills and they've been so, uh, if you will, uh, programmed to say we're measured by how do you do on this test. After a while they'll say, Miss Pawkin, uh, uh, would you please prepare us for, for, for the test? And I mean, this isn't, this isn't working across the board. And I think a lot of people have figured it out. So I, I your legislators here are what, Larry Gonzalez Larry and Tony Dale, or uh, I think Larry and Tony are both uh, uh, aboard. So I, I really, I know, it, you know, I hope, you know, I hope I'm not just, uh, I'm not trying to preach the choir. I think we're about to get something in a major way uh, done this legislative session. I've never seen so you know, many people come I would just caution, though, about uh, the idea that any test is going to measure um, what it purports to measure. Um, I mean, even when you look at SAT and ACT right. scores, what are they the biggest predictor of? Family income, right. not college rate. I mean, even the colleges don't particularly look that close to just that test. And well, the idea that, you know, the idea that schools and, and the whole idea that we're unaccountable if you take that test away from us, uh, I challenge anyone to come over to my office, I'll show you how much accountability we have. It's not just uh, the piece that you're talking about the star. Sure. We have multiple accountability subsets that we have to look at. Well, no, I, I use that as an example. There are different ways to go uh, in terms of, um, of, of uh, I would say, and, 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 and you're right, I mean, I have a, a great friend from, from high school that did very well academically, very bright, 
for whatever reason, he went to take one of those tests and he frees up. We call him Choker, you know, Frank Cotter the Choker. But he went on to he went on to a fine college institution, got a law degree, very successful. So, but I think that we've just got so <coughs> overemphasized this. Uh, Teaching to the test approach. Uh, there's a we're going to we're going to have to do something about our work. Because I can tell you that you know I remember being in school and we didn't have those tests. But the bulk of our workforce now, that's all they've known when they were in school, and then now that's all they've known as a as a worker too. That that's all they know. Well, and they're dropping out. I mean, I I just was with. I'll give you an example. Uh, Three kids were seniors at the craft training center. I was with the, the man who founded it yesterday in Austin. He was telling me we may lose them because they haven't been able to pass this, you know, end of end of year test. They're not going on to college, but they can't get a high school diploma, or they have to go back in and away from what they're doing over here in order to get remedial help to get there. And so I, I concur. And I think the way you measure. Uh, vocational technical education, for example, is, is not really that hard. How are they doing in terms of moving towards getting an industry certified credential or a license that, that's acceptable in the field? And I think that's a good measurement of, of that approach. But why should everything just be measured on a, of a school or a district on how they do on, on these tests, which is the current system? And, and fine arts, you know, for example, uh, is not measured uh, on the existing test. But under what we're talking about with multiple pathways, you've got fine arts and humanities, math and science. Let people go in the direction where their talents and interests are. And then you'd have a career-oriented approach with everybody getting the basics, hypothetically, you know, uh, and could be tested on English 3 and Algebra 1 uh, as, as part of an end-of-year end test for everybody, but uh, limit the number of tests, not to the 15 in the course exams you've got now. So that's just comments because you got to fire up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Additions to your, your, your testing system comments, you could add tabs because that was our first try at it, right. then it was teams, and then it was toss, and it was tax and star. So we've had many bites of the apple with the system, going all the way back to the <laughs> The other thing is, I just got back from China right, and looking at their educational system. The only thing I worry about if we move towards the vocational piece and all that and, and tracks is that kids don't get tracked too early. Because right. some kids just just develop and uh, later. So and they start their tracking system in fifth grade. And you take a three-day test and, and you get to go to a good middle school or bad middle school based on whether or not you do that, and you're you're just tracked into right. you're not a college track. Germany does that a little uh, a little older, but the same thing. No, we're not talking about track. We're talking about laying out the option. But if the kids, you know, what I'm hearing from a lot of the superintendents is that under the current system, it's very difficult for a student that's interested in career and technical education to be able to get a coherent sequence of courses in the field that he or she may be interested in in order to get that. A certificate or license by the time he or she is graduated from high school. So this would free up by, by increased flexibility. But we're not pushing anybody, you got to go in this direction because we, we don't want to go back to, to that system. But you got to lay out the options for because students are interested in different things and have different talents. And quite frankly, you know, uh, I, I had, I, I don't think I've told you this story, but I, I was speaking on this issue to uh, a, a group not too long ago in, uh, in, in, in Minnesota, and, um, and a lady came up to me afterwards and said uh, her, her son had gotten a degree from a four-year university, had a lot of college debt. The average debt to a four-year university is uh, like 26000 currently, and the unemployment or underemployment of the class of 2011 is over 15%, but I, I, the lady came up to me and said, well, he got a four-year college degree, couldn't find a good job, went back to TSTC, got an associate's degree in the shooter's <laughs> area, and loves what he's doing, he's got a great paying job. So it's, uh, it, it, it is to recognize that right now, quite frankly, the demand is great for the skilled trades, particularly with this explosive uh, development, the energy, uh, energy finds here in Texas, and what it also does 
for our manufacturing industry because you're seeing a huge expansion, particularly the petrochemical industry, because the low price of natural gas. If you're a natural gas producer or owner, uh, you're not happy with the low price, but if you're a manufacturer, it allows us to be much more competitive with other nations on the manufacturing side. So it's a huge plus, but literally when I was in Baytown, their biggest concern is where we're going to find the workers. And these are really good paying jobs.